When XRP was created, this actually was created before Ripple existed, the creators of XRP decided there'd be 100 billion units because they saw it as a, you know, rather than having a smaller number with a very high price, they saw it as something they wanted to be a, effectively a global reserve currency. XRP was created before Ripple as an entity, as a company was incorporated. And the founders of XRP chose a hundred billion token supply. Why? The CEO of Ripple just told you this isn't some internet schizo, some guy down a rabbit hole. They have the goal to make Ripple the world reserve currency. I know people talk about that in the community. It sounds far fetched, but that has always been the goal from the beginning. A hundred billion token supply because they want XRP to be the world reserve currency and they need a large token supply to give everyone a fair share of the pie. Welcome back to another video, guys. We give away $10 in XRP every day on this channel to enter the giveaway. Like the video, subscribe, notifications on, and comment anything in the YouTube comments below. And if you guys need an exchange to buy XRP or other digital assets, I recommend Uphold. A link to Uphold's in the video description below. I'm gonna return to this video in a moment, but I first wanna cover a big economic conference talking about Ripple. Bill Gates and the Rockefeller Foundation talking about Ripple and some other really big stories. Let's hop right into it. So here we have a document from ResearchGate. I also wanna talk about the Ripple Quarter 4 Markets Report. So this is a document from the Fifth International Conference on Financial Innovation and Economic Development. What is this conference? I've never heard of it. It's called the ICFID 2020. It was in China, and it's to bring together innovative academics and industrial experts in the field of financial innovation and economic development. Okay, so this is innovative academics and this is industry experts. This one is by this paper is by Ching Dang. I might have said that wrong. In this section, analysis as blockchain cross border payment application model. They say taking Ripple as an example, Ripple intends to use XRP as a bridge currency to make transactions cheaper and faster and use XRP tokens as its core pillar for settlement. Currently, Ripple provides access software for different banks, and many banks use this access software. That's why it's going to be so easy for Ripple to onboard them to on demand liquidity because Ripple already provides this access software that many, many banks use. Different banks do not need to adopt a unified accounting system. They maintain the original accounting system. Banks act as nodes in the Ripple network and use cryptographic algorithms for verification. So this is a way for you to envision the future global economic system. Each bank is a node in the blockchain of the Ripple network. And check this document out here. This is from the bank not the bank, but the Rockefeller Foundation, the Digital Public Goods Affairs, and the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Co-develop digital public infrastructure for an equitable recovery. Talking about the COVID thing that I can't mention on YouTube. In this document, they talk about this system called MojaLoop. MojaLoop is an open source software that provides a blueprint and tool set that central banks, mobile operators, and others can use to implement real-time, low-cost, high transaction volume and broadly interoperable mobile payments. What does that sound like to you guys? On-demand liquidity. The project is managed by Moja Loop, which was launched in early 2020. Its members include central banks, financial services, and tech companies such as Google, Coil, and Ripple, and philanthropies such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation. So we're talking Google, we're talking Bill and Melinda Gates and Rockefeller Foundation. What other blockchain companies are sitting at tables this elite? Not many, and that's why you should keep your eye on XRP. Another reason why you should keep your eye on XRP. And if you guys use Twitter, give me a follow on Twitter. I tweet out a lot of information I don't include in my videos and I love engaging with my viewers. I really do appreciate you guys, by the way. So if you guys do use this social media, Twitter, give me a follow on there. Talk to me. So Dark Defender says, hi, all. I would like you to have a closer look at the structure in the weekly time frame. XRP weekly super trend is green. And guys, when we look at a, a price chart, when we're looking at a weekly price chart, there's a lot more validity to it than a short term price chart. And we're really, really, really heating up here and getting to some higher highs and lower lows. 
XRP is primed for a breakout. Some takeaways from this Q4 markets report. It's a really long document. I'm going to bring you the most important stuff. So the notable takeaways, on-demand liquidity, Ripple's crypto-enabled XRP payment solution launched in France, Sweden, and Africa. Now available in 40 payout markets. Total XRP sales by Ripple were 200 million versus 300 million. So Ripple's selling a little bit less XRP. And this is big for developers. You guys might not understand some of this stuff, but Ripple released the first phase of the Ethereum virtual machine sidechain for the XRP ledger, which allows DeFi applications like Uniswap, Aave, Compound to easily launch on XRPL. So if you don't know much about Ethereum, it's the chosen blockchain for developers. And why this is huge for XRP is because now developers who know how to build on Ethereum can sim seamlessly build on XRP Ledger and get the benefits of the XRP Ledger, faster speeds, lower fees, without learning whole new programming developments. We're basically bringing over all of these De DeFi developers and giving them access to their DeFi apps on XRP L. Many retail institutional participants fled self-custody via on-chain wallets. A big takeaway from the last year, guys, all these crypto companies that have gone bankrupt, exchanges, yield providers like BlockFi and Celsius. So if you guys don't have a Ledger wallet from 2022, that should be your big takeaway. Get a cold storage wallet. I don't care how much crypto you have. It's important to be safe with your crypto. Buy it directly from Ledger's store. I have a link to Ledger in the video description below if you guys don't have one of those. Here's the really big stuff, guys. Ripple wrapped up 2022 with its strongest year to date. Just think about that. In a, in a year where the whole crypto market, even outside of crypto, the financial markets in general, are all getting wrecked. They're all getting obliterated. And Ripple's had its strongest year yet. That should be a testament on its own. Uh, Ripple is now in 40 payout markets. Ripple has continued to sell XRP only in connection with on-demand liquidity transactions. And they put an asterisk here. All on-demand liquidity sales are attributed to growth and adoption. So they're only selling XRP, not to fund Ripple, but to onboard and to get users, aka big banks, to use on-demand liquidity. And check this out right here. Ripple has been a buyer of XRP in the secondary market and expects momentum to continue as ODL continues to grow. So they're telling you verbatim, Ripple's gonna keep buying XRP. They're not selling much XRP. And they're gonna keep buying XRP back as ODL gains momentum. So imagine a scenario in the future when XRP has regulatory clarity after this lawsuit. How many more banks are gonna use on-demand liquidity? We've heard Brad Garlinghouse say already that Bank of America is ready to use on-demand liquidity. And a lot of other banks, if Bank of America is ready, I guarantee you other banks are. They're just waiting for this lawsuit to wind down. Imagine the amount of XRP Ripple is going to need to buy back once all these banks start using this product. And this isn't a theory. This is what Ripple is doing right now and they will continue to do. So guys, I'm going to leave you here with a question right now. In 10 years, 2033, a decade from now. What do you see the price of XRP being? I'm going to say over $100. I won't speculate any more than that. And if you guys want $40 for free, sign up with Webull, deposit a penny, and you can get up to $3,000 in free stocks. You'll typically just get $40 to $300, but for signing up and just depositing a penny, you get a guaranteed minimum value of $40 in stocks. Sell the stocks, withdraw your money, close your account, do whatever you want. But don't miss out on this great promotion. It does end soon. Links in the video description below. God bless you all. Until next time.